Hey there, this is Anthony Gordon with Avid Artist Relations. Uh, back again at Bonnaroo 2010. We're here with Brent Dykus, who's doing front of house uh, mix for Nora Jones here on the main stage. Hey, how you doing today? I'm all right. Staying cool. <laughs> trying to. That makes one of us. I've just been sweating like a pig. I don't know if you can tell from the uh, footage here, but it's about 100 degrees and 100% humidity, so it's not, it's not real cool out here. No, no, especially when you're wearing two shirts. Yeah. <laughs> I'll lose the one, the other shirt eventually. So we're out here uh, in a festival setting. Do you guys do a lot of festivals come summertime? You know, we haven't historically. Uh, usually the festivals we do are, uh, we're the only artist and it's in a park and it's quiet and everyone brings their blanket out and pretty relaxed environment. So the big festival scene with other rock bands, it's, uh, we're doing the most this year. So we're doing, you know, three or four events like this where, you know, 30 minute transition into our set and then we're out of there at five o'clock or something. So it's a new thing for us. So what kind of challenges do you uh, have doing right, set lifetime for a festival as opposed to doing your own show? Well, the biggest challenge right. for us really is in the backline department. We have a lot of uh, vintage gear and gear that needs to be kind of tweaked and worked on every day. Just uh, you know, it's not we can't just hit recall and expect the wooden piano to you know, be ready to go. And you know we don't have a MIDI uh, trigger or anything like that going on in the piano. So just a lot of little uh, detail and tech work in the backline department. You know, sound-wise, we're pretty straightforward. You know, we put mics on instruments and make it louder. And uh, luckily, I. I am prepared with files for various consoles, Chris, but I always can you talk in the stage work with now? our uh, digital design console so I can pretty much be ready, so Chris I can focus on the maintenance and then on. recall my okay. file and we're pretty darn close. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, did you swap? You know, maybe there? let's, uh, sorry, move it over here a little bit. <laughs> well, no, we're fine, we're fine. Sorry, we're just getting a little, uh, it's a live show, folks. Yeah, we, uh, can, we can stop if you want. Um, so what kind of desk are you guys out on? We carry profiles for both monitor and front of house. Yeah. Yeah. 48 channels, you know, one stage all rack, right, one so front of house rack. Front of house guy going. So when you get ready for the tour, how does, do you get all your files set up? Do you have everything all laid out uh, on the console so you can just recall it when you get rolling? Absolutely, yeah. These days we don't have a lot of pre-production time. Usually we have one day before our band comes in. And so, uh, yeah, absolutely. We get our mind wrapped around, you know, the new variables and, and program our John, files Chris and going. get as close as we can That's, ahead of time. Yeah, it might be because so, yeah. the, uh, we're on the profile. Uh, how long have you been doing the digital console thing? Uh, I started on digital consoles uh, really in about, oh, well, 04 would have been my first. Uh, the last, as I say a lot, the last analog console I mixed or teched on on a tour was 03. So, uh, do you feel like you've given up anything moving to the digital world? Or do you feel like the convenience has been something that's been good for you as a creative person, as a, as a tech guy? Uh, well... <laughs> Yeah, my definition of creative is having uh, tools to do my job, and in my opinion, I have not given up anything making the transition because all of my ideas, I have a lot better uh, toolkit now to, uh, I guess, do you know, explore my ideas and work with and change my mind. And you know, now if I want to change my mind out on the road or in rehearsals, because oh, I thought this would work, but now that we're actually playing it in rehearsal, it won't work. I don't have to call the shop for more gear. I can just load stuff up, and and away we go. And so for me. Having, you know, a scopable snapshot uh, recall scenario, have, being able to do things like digital Y cables and, and that kind of stuff has really improved my workflow quite a bit. Cool. Yeah. So are you a studio guy as well? Well, yes and no. I, I definitely, uh, yeah. The 91 will be here in a second. They got to pull it out of another. Yeah. It is a live show, folks. This is actual uh, real world. We're not in a studio here, obviously. <laughs> I do, most of my studio work's been in uh, sound design for film and TV. That's a majority of my projects. I have uh, a workspace, you know, in my, close to my home where I can work. I, uh, I do a lot, but at, for at this point, historically, I'd say in the last 10 years, it's been 90-10 for me between live sound, whether it be music or the corporate world, versus my studio-related projects. Normally, if I take a three-month break or something, I do a lot of uh, film and, and work like that. Yeah. Uh, was the fact that you had like some studio and Pro Tools chops, how much of that translated to being able to use the venues console and plug in? 100% of it, 100% has translated in everything, you know. All my workflow and uh, my tools are the same now, you know. Whether I'm working on an interview with a LAV 
or a live vocal in, in this world, um, you know, I know what I can use, and now I can use my same tools for for that. Uh, you know, so right now for me. If I need to solve a problem, now I know exactly what I need to do because okay, we can go ahead and I'm working the inside of the Pro Tools environment either way. Right. And we do a lot of remixing and a lot of archival work to where you know all of my organizational skills and, and session prep and all of that talking, so applies to both worlds. Both yeah. 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 So what's next for you? I know you have a baby on the way and congratulations on that. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So what's next for you career-wise? Is there other stuff in the world of audio that you're looking forward to, stuff that still excites you? Sure. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'll just uh, explore my my post right and my corporate options once we finish right. up with this tour. Because uh, I've been on the road for about ten years now, and uh, I'd like to stay home a little more. So it's everyone's goal, though. Everyone has wants to stay home. Yeah. Well, it depends on what part of your career is. There's a lot of there's a lot of people whose goal right now would be to be mixing Nora Jones at Bonnaroo. I have zero complaints. I've been very fortunate with a great set of mentors and a lot of cool opportunities over the years, so I'm not complaining at all. No. Uh, however, uh, I've been on pretty much all my tours in the last right five years have been back to back, so I will all of a sudden be more available to my uh, corporate employers. Sure. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. We're really looking forward to the show, and uh, we'll be right back at you with more from Bonnaroo 2010. Thanks. Thank you.